Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. I think when we look back at the cultural battles that are fought around generative AI, one of the front lines is going to be in the realm of music. Music has always had a particular place when it comes to the disruption of new technologies. And in many ways, the introduction of Napster and the battle that ensued with music lawyers made that industry more prepared than many others for what would come over the next couple decades of technology. I don't think it's an accident that music is the industry where the incumbent power, i.e. the record labels, probably maintains more control relative to the startups than just about any other space. What's more, we've already seen AI start to cause that sort of immune response once again. Earlier this year, Hard on My Sleeve, which of course was the beat that you heard over the intro of this episode if you're listening as a podcast, really scared the hell out of music executives because of how good it was. It was an AI version of Drake and an AI version of The Weeknd, and the song was an absolute banger, going completely viral, getting millions and millions and millions of streams and downloads, before effectively the entire music industry freaked out and started throwing legal weight around like crazy, getting it pushed off of platforms. But of course, it's a digital artifact, and it's still all over YouTube and everywhere else. More playfully, but no less significantly, we are constantly getting AI remixes like this one of Frank Sinatra singing Little John's Get Low that become sensations on TikTok or YouTube or wherever they're premiered, and serve, if nothing else, to remind us just how good this technology is. Earlier this year, Google released research on something that they called Music LM. In the same way that a mid-journey or a stable diffusion is a text-to-image generator, Music LM was meant to be a text-to-music generator. For example, here's audio generated from the prompt, the main soundtrack of an arcade game. It is fast-paced and upbeat, with a catchy electric guitar riff. The music is repetitive and easy to remember, but with unexpected sounds, like cymbal crashes or drum rolls. Now, part of what made Music LM exciting is that Google actually made it available in its AI test kitchen. For those lucky enough to get access, yours truly included, you can play around with prompting Music LM and seeing how it does. Here's an example of the prompt, a simple classical melody evoking the feeling of fall, emphasis on a melodic top line played by flute. Now, of course, the example I gave has an inherent element of subjectivity, given that I asked it to evoke the feeling of fall. But both of these options that it came up with did a pretty good job of one being a simple classic melody and emphasizing a melodic top line that was played by the flute. Frankly, subjectively, too, I think they did an OK job with this evoking the feeling of fall piece. The way that the test kitchen works is once you've got your two examples, you give the one that you think did a better job a trophy to help improve the model. In this case, I think the second did a slightly better job. Let's try another, a driving 1980s style electronic synthwave track in a minor key that sounds like it might be a dramatic interlude in a video game. Both of these frankly nail it, I guess I'll give the trophy to the first just because I kind of like it better. And I think this is exactly what gets me so excited about this type of technology, is that music is so much about a feeling and a vibe, that being able to describe not just an instrumentation and a key, but an emotional register, and start to see even these very nascent examples actually achieve that, is pretty remarkable. Well, just this week, Google's Music LM got some competition, and that is Meta's AudioCraft. 
Like Music LM, AudioCraft is a way to generate audio and music from simple text prompts. Meta's announcement post writes, Imagine a professional musician being able to explore new compositions without having to play a single note on an instrument. Or a small business owner adding a soundtrack to their latest video ad on Instagram with ease. That's the promise of AudioCraft, our latest AI tool that generates high-quality, realistic audio and music from text. Now, interesting, AudioCraft isn't actually just one model. Instead, it's a combination of three models called MusicGen, AudioGen, and Encodec. MusicGen, as you might guess, is a music generation model. Meta writes, music tracks are more complex than environmental sounds, and generating coherent samples on the long-term structure is especially important when creating novel music pieces. Now, AudioGen is for the generation of audio that isn't necessarily music, but is perhaps environmental. Now, Encodec is a little bit different. They call it a state-of-the-art, real-time, high-fidelity audio codec leveraging neural networks. Encodec is trained specifically to compress any kind of audio and reconstruct the original signal with high fidelity. And of course, when it comes to these tools, what we really want to know is how it actually sounds. You had a chance to hear the Music LM version, so let's try those same two prompts in the Hugging Space demo environment for AudioCraft. So here we go, a simple classical melody evoking the feeling of fall, emphasis on a melodic top line played by flute. Not bad. And now let's try a driving 1980s style electronic synthwave track in a minor key that sounds like it might be a dramatic interlude in a video game. Again, pretty good, although maybe a little bit more major key than minor key there. Perhaps unsurprisingly, I think when it comes to which of these tools is better, that may, in spite of the name of this episode, not really be the most important question. The more important question is likely to me to be how fast are people going to put this code into end user experiences that musicians can actually get their hands on. In my conversation with musician friends, there is a lot of mixed feelings about this stuff. On the one hand, it's scary. People are worried about their skills being commoditized and reduced to something that a computer does with the press of a button. At the same time, there's a lot of excitement and enthusiasm to get their hands on these models and actually start to try to use them as part of composition. My strong, strong feeling is that in the same way that there are tens of thousands of times the number of people who can play guitar or play piano or sing, as there are people who can take those skills and turn them into great songwriting or composition, that just making it easier for anyone to dabble with music and audio creation isn't going to undermine the fact that the best outputs are going to likely still come from the same people who are creating music right now. This is obviously an extremely nascent part of the AI space, and I can't wait to see how it develops. That's going to do it for today's AI Breakdown. Come join us on the AI Breakdown Discord. Drop in your best creations with these tools. And until next time, peace.